Greetings, this is Greg. This will be a relatively quick video, non-scripted, so I apologize if I misspeak or say something that's not exactly technically correct. Uh, but this video will be about installing water injection on my 124 Spider Abarth. It is not going to be an overly technical video. I'm really just going to show where the components are located and not get in too much into uh, how you would set one of these up. All of the components are from Devil's Own. I also highly recommend Cooling Mist. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using Devil's Own stuff, largely because they're down the road and I get the stuff more quickly. But uh, both Devil's Own and Cooling Mist, as well as some others, are, are really excellent. Uh, we'll start in the trunk. We've got a three-quarter gallon tank here and a pump. The reason I use the three-quarter gallon tank is simply because there's not a lot of trunk space. Let me get my light. Not a lot of trunk space in the 124. And I like to take the car on road trips, and I don't like to sacrifice too much trunk space. That tank is adequate for at least one, maybe one and a half tanks of gasoline in fairly spirited street driving. It is, however, only good for about 15 or 20 minutes of track time. So if you're serious about running your 124 at the track, you would need to rig up two of those tanks or just uh, sacrifice some trunk space and put in a bigger four-mounted four -mounted pump. All right, now we're going to get to the bottom of the tank here. I'll get my light right so you can see that. There's the tank outlet. That has a filter built into it. That's very important because you don't want contaminants or debris reaching the pump. That, again, is the devil's own system, which is to have the filter built into the outlet. Um, a lot of the other companies do it a little bit differently and instead just have a regular outlet and then put a filter somewhere in line between the outlet and the pump. Either method is acceptable, both have their advantages. The pump and tank are mounted to the trunk liner, and you can see that I use very long bolts for the tank. The reason is because I want to be able to loosen those up and pull it back so that I can pour directly into the cap from really any jug without having to worry about having a funnel with me. Uh, that, having a funnel would then take up that much more trunk space, so we don't want that. The pump uh, wiring runs up to the front of the car. Well, the power wire does, which is the red wire. The ground wire is soldered and connected to the chassis right behind the trunk liner. It only goes a few inches. There are two other ground wires involved. Uh, they're both in here, but they're not connected. They would connect to a low level switch here to provide a low fluid level warning in the, from the driver's position. One of those lines, one of those ground wires from the low level switch will ground right to the chassis and that's already installed. And the other uh, wire from the low-level switch would run up to the front of the car in order to ground the low-level light. And uh, that's installed also. I just haven't installed the switch. So that's about it for the trunk. Again, pump, uh, tank, tank size selection is an issue, and uh, where you're going to put the filter is kind of an issue. But that's all that's back here. From there, I, when you remove the carpeting, there's a rubber grommet right down in here. And I punch a hole in that, and from through there I run the lines and wiring. And then they run up to the front of the car. They run through a channel underneath the car where the factory locates fuel lines, evap lines, and other things. It's a fairly nice spot to put it. Not quite, nice, not quite as nice as it is on other Fiats where there's a plastic shield and a little channel that covers it all up. It's all kind of exposed uh, with the... the the chassis that comes from uh, Mazda, from the factory in Hiroshima. It's not as nice as the way Fiat did it, but it's certainly adequate, and uh, that's where I route the stuff. Now, all of this comes up the left side of the car, but at some point that fluid line needs to cross over to the right. So I do that in front of the oil pan. The line crosses over to the right, goes to a check valve. We'll get to that. And then from the check valve to a nozzle, which is fit into the cold side intercooler piping, with a fitting from Devil's Own that is made for that purpose. Uh, let's talk about the check valve for a minute. Check valve is important. If you didn't have that, uh, suction, the engine could conceivably suction feed fluid in when the pump is not running. Not a lot of cases where that would happen, but it, but it would happen to an extent, especially since the tank is higher than the nozzle. So to avoid that, we have a check valve shortly before the nozzle that will only open uh, when the pump is running. It requires 60 PSI to open, so it's not going to just, you know, the weight of the fluid in the tank is not going to force it open. The pump, however, forces it open and then sprays fluid. I like the idea of a check valve because it's, it works perfectly. It's simple. There's no wiring. You just, you know, connect hoses to each end of it. Done. Um, a drawback to a check valve, however, 
is that if you run the tank dry or fail to prime the system when you initially install it, you can end up with an air bubble in between the pump and the check valve, and the pump can have a very hard time then forcing open the check valve, in which case you hear the pump running. It won't sound quite right if you know what they sound like, but it will run, and it'll run and not be spraying, and uh, having a water injection system that you think is working when it isn't is kind of a problem. We'll get back to that check valve in a minute and talk about some other choices there. Uh, there's a green light here. See it? There we go. Okay, that green light indicates power to the pump. So when the pump kicks on, that green light comes on. However, uh, you can have situations where the green light's on and the system is not spraying, uh, such as an air bubble that I just described. A better way to hook up that green light is to have it triggered by a pressure switch in the line between the check valve and the nozzle. Then when the green light comes on, you know you're spraying. And that's what I'm going to do. I usually do it that way, but I didn't have time here. I will uh, get to that. And if people are interested in that, I'll make a video on that specific way of hooking up that light. Uh, in lieu of a check valve, some people use a solenoid. I get it. Eliminates the air bubble problem, at least largely eliminates it. There's some real good reasons to use a solenoid. However, now you've got additional wiring and the solenoids themselves fail sometimes. So I, I personally prefer the check valve, but uh, you can go either way. Every company seems to offer a choice. Now, over here, you can see a brass pressure switch. It's adjustable and the switch will activate when boost pressure reaches a certain value as seen through that silicone pressure line, which ultimately goes to the intake manifold. When boost in this car reaches about 13 PSI, because of the way I have the switch set, it will connect a wire that grounds at the chassis to a wire that goes to uh, this relay. Now, when this relay is grounded by the pressure switch, it then connects the battery to the pump, and the pump kicks on. So that's the relay that turns on the pump. There are only four wires associated with it, so wiring this stuff up is fairly easy. The blue wire connects to the battery via this fuse. I can then deactivate the system by pulling the fuse if I want to run the car without water injection. And there's a wire going to the pump. There, Additionally, this is a wire that takes ignition power. This power bar here uh, receives power only when ignition is on, so it's a great spot for me to connect accessories to if I only want them powered when ignition is on, not when the battery's on. So, or not when it's just connected to the battery. So, uh, let's see, I think we covered all four wires, right? One wire goes to the pump, one wire goes to the battery, one wire goes to ground, and one wire goes to ignition power. And that's it for that portion of the system. This is an on-off system. Boost reaches a certain pressure value, the system kicks on. That is not ideal for performance. It is adequate if you're using the system to provide additional anti-knock protection uh, consistency in high temperatures, or um, maybe in some cases a little bit more power, but generally speaking, an on-off system will not add any power because you just can't get the water amount right throughout the whole RPM range. And that brings up another subject. This car has a quote-unquote, well, quote, two gallon per hour, unquote, nozzle on it. Now, that two gallon per hour nozzle flows 3.8 gallons per hour. I don't think that's because Devil's Own is misleading us. I think it's because, well, first of all, they may not know. I don't know if they flow check these things or not. I'll, I'll probably ask them. But in any case, I think that it's two gallons per hour at some pressure value below the pressure value of the pump. In other words, the people that make the nozzles probably aren't talking to the people that make the pump uh, because this two gallon per hour one flows 3.8 gallons per hour. And I've, I've checked other ones, and they're all off like that. And 3.8 is just a little bit too much for this motor. This motor has a very nearly stock tune. Uh, it has some bolt-on components. It goes pretty well, but, but uh, it's not tuned yet to take advantage of, of the water injection. Uh, you notice I've got a towel there. There's a reason for that. Uh, I am testing a computer that can control the water injection in a very sophisticated way. It can vary the water spray according to boost RPM or other parameters that I might elect to put in or not to put in. That will enable it to not only save water because it'll spray, it won't be spraying too much when it doesn't need to, it'll enable me to use the system to generate more power because it'll spray the right amount when I want to. It also has an interesting ability 
in that it can change boost levels of the engine when the water methanol kicks on, or water in this case. Uh, in other words, it could be something like if you're familiar with war emergency power in a World War II airplane where the water spray kicks on and then manifold pressure, which we'd call boost here, would go up. So in other words, water kicks on as sensed by a pressure switch in the line. Uh, then the computer raises boost, not only regulates the water flow, but raises boost, uh, say, three or four pounds to really take advantage of, of that spray. So it's a really slick computer, and the reason there's a towel over it is because it is not my product. Uh, somebody else makes it, and it's not, and they've not released it yet, and it's certainly not my right to release somebody else's product. Uh, so you're going to have to wait for the manufacturer to release that. But but they're being nice enough to uh, lend me one and let me experiment with it, and I'm very happy about that. And they're actually flying out here to to uh, help set it up and teach me about it. So I'm excited about that. Anyhow, that'll be maybe be another video, uh, maybe not. I don't know how that's going to go, but hopefully. This video has helped you guys and shown you where I put the various system components for an on-off water injection system on my Fiat 124. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have more interest in water injection, uh, nozzle sizing calculation, different types of fluids, uh, different types of systems, different methods of control, whatever, whatever questions you may have, uh, please ask in the comments below and I'll try and incorporate them into another video. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good day.